from around the globe, it's theCUBE with digital coverage of Red Hat Summit 2020, brought to you by Red Hat. Last year in 2019, IBM made the biggest M&A move of the year with a $34 billion acquisition of Red Hat. It positioned IBM for the next decade after what was a very tumultuous tenure by CEO Ginny Rometty, who had to shrink in order to grow. Unfortunately, she didn't have enough time to do the grow part. That has now gone toward uh, Arvind Krishna, the new CEO of IBM. This is Dave Vellante, and I'm here with Stu Miniman, and this is our Red Hat keynote analysis. This is our seventh year doing the Red Hat Summit, and we're very excited to be here. This is our first year doing, Stu, the Red Hat Summit post IBM acquisition. We've also got IBM Think uh, next week, so what we want to do for you today is review what's going on at the Red Hat Summit. Stu, you've been wall to wall with the interviews. We're going to break down the announcements. IBM had just announced its quarter, so we get some glimpse as to what's happening uh, in the business, and then we're going to talk about going forward, what the prognosis is for both IBM and Red Hat. Well, and Dave, of course, our audience understands there's a reason why we're sitting farther apart than normal in our studio, and you know why we're not. <laughs> in San Francisco where the show is supposed to be uh, this year. Last year it's in Boston, Red Hat Summit goes coast to coast every year. It's our seventh year doing the show. First year doing it all digital. Of course, our community is always online, um, but uh, you know, real focus, you know, we're, we're going to talk about, Dave, you know, you listen to the keynote speeches, it's not the, as we said in our preview, it's not the hoopla. Uh, we had a preview with Paul Cormier ahead of the event, they're not making big announcements. Most of the product pieces were all out front. It's open source anyway. We know when it's coming uh, for the most part. Some big partnership news, of course, strong customer momentum, uh, but a different tenor and the customers that Red Hat's lined up for me to interview, all t t talking you know, essential services like medical, uh, your, your energy services, your communication services. So, you know, real focus, I think Dave, both IBM and Red Hat, making sure that they are setting the appropriate tone in these challenging times. Yeah, I mean, everybody who we've talked to says, look, at uh, employees and safety comes first. Once we get them working from home and we know that they're safe and healthy, uh, we want to get productive. And so you've seen, as we've reported, that, that shift to the work from home infrastructure and investments in that, um, and so, now it's all about how do we get closer to clients, how do we stay close to clients and be there for them and actually have you know, business going forward. You know, the good news for IBM is it's got strong cash flow, it's got a strong balance sheet despite you know, the acquisition. I mean, it's just you know, raised some more you know, low, low cost debt which you know, gives them some dry powder going forward. So I think IBM's going to be fine. Uh, it's just there's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, but let's go back to your takeaways from the Red Hat Summit. You've done you know, dozens of interviews, uh, you got a good take on the company, what are your top three takeaways, Stu? Yeah, so, so uh, first of all, Dave, you know, the focus everybody has is, you know, what does Red Hat do for the cloud story uh, for IBM? OpenShift especially uh, is absolutely a highlight. Over 2,000 customers now from some really large ones. You know, last year I interviewed, you know, Delta. Uh, you've got, you know, Ford and Verizon up on stage for, for the keynote, strong partnership uh, with Microsoft uh, talking about what they're doing. So OpenShift has really strong momentum. If you talk about, you know, where is the leadership uh, in this whole Kubernetes space, Red Hat absolutely needs to be in that discussion. Not only are they, you know, other than Google, the top contributor really there, but from a customer standpoint, the experience, what they've built there. But what I really liked uh, from Red Hat's standpoint is it's not just an infrastructure discussion. It's not, oh, VMs and containers, and there's things we want to talk about, about VMs and containers, and even serverless from Red Hat's standpoint, but Red Hat, at its core, what is it? They started out as an operating system company, RHEL, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. What's the tie between the OS and the application? Oh my God, they've got decades of experience. How do you build applications? Everything from how they're modernizing Java uh, with a project called Quarkus uh, through how they're really helping customers through this digital transformation. I hear a similar message uh, from Red Hat and their customers that I hear from Satya Nadella at Microsoft is we're building lots of applications. We need to modernize what they're doing and Red Hat well positioned across the stack to not only be the platform for it, but to help all of the pieces to help me modernize my applications, build new ones, modernize some of the existing ones. So OpenShift, a big piece of it, uh, you know, 
Automation has been a critical thing for a while. Uh, we did the Cube last year at Ansible Fest uh, for the first time. Uh, from Red Hat took that acquisition and has helped accelerate that community in growth. And they're really, Dave, pulling all of the pieces together. So it's what you hear from Stephanie Shiris, who uh, ironically enough came over from IBM to run that business inside of Red Hat. Well, you know, now she's running it inside Red Hat and there's places that this product proliferates into the IBM portfolio. Um, next week when we we're at uh, IBM Think, I'm sure we'll hear a lot about IBM Cloud Packs and look at what's underneath IBM Cloud Packs. There's OpenShift, there's RHEL, all those pieces. So, you know, I know one of the things we want to talk about, Dave, is, you know, what does that dynamic of Red Hat and IBM mean? So, you know, OpenShift, automation, the full integration, both of the Red Hat portfolio and how it ties in with IBM would be my top three. Well, Red Hat is now IBM. I mean, it's a clearly part of the company. Uh, it's, it's the company strategy going forward. The CEO, Arvind Krishna, is the architect of the Red Hat acquisition. And so, you know, that it's all in on Red Hat. Well, Dave, I mean, just the nuance there, of course, is the, the thing you hear over and over from the Red Hatters is Red Hat remains Red Hat. That cultural shift is something I'd love to discuss because, you know, Jim Whitehurst, now he's no longer a Red Hat employee, he's an IBM employee. So you've got Red Hat employees, IBM employees, they are keeping that, you know, separation wall, but obviously there's flowing in technology. Yeah, come there's on. Some come people on. in tech. Come on. It, look, it, it's not even close to what VMware is. VMware is a separate public company, has separate reporting, Red Hat doesn't. I mean, yes, I hear you. Yeah. You know, you got the Red Hat culture and that's good, but it's a far cry from you know a, a, a separate entity with full transparency on the financials and and so I'm, I'm, I hear you, but I'm not fully buying it. But let's <laughs> let's get into it. Let's take a look at at the quarter uh, because that I think will give us an indication as to how much we actually can understand about Red Hat. And and again, my belief is it's really about IBM and Red Hat together. <clears throat> I think that is their opportunity. Um, so Alex, if you wouldn't mind pulling up the first slide, these are highlights from IBM's uh, Q1. Uh, and you know, we won't spend much time on the, the, the IBM side of the business, although I want to bring some of that in. But here, the key here is you see Red Hat at 20% uh, revenue growth. So still solid revenue growth you know, maybe a little less robust than it was, you know, sequentially last quarter, but still very, very strong. And that really is IBM's opportunity here, 2,200 clients using Red Hat and, and IBM container platforms. The key here is when Ginny Rometty announced this uh, acquisition along with Arvind Krishna and Jim Whitehurst, she said, this is going to be, this is going to be cash flow, free cash flow accretive in year one. They've already achieved that. They said it's going to be EPS accretive by year two. They are well on their way to achieving that. Why? We talked about this, Stu. It's because IBM has a huge services organization that it can plug OpenShift <clears throat> right into and begin to modernize app, uh, uh, applications that are out there. I think they cited on the call that they had 100 ongoing projects. And that is driving immediate revenue and allows IBM, to, from a financial standpoint, to get an immediate return. So, the numbers are pretty solid. Yeah, uh, absolutely, Dave. And you know, talking about, th there is a little bit of the blurring line between the companies. Uh, one of the product pieces uh, that, that came out at the show is, uh, uh, IBM has had for uh, a couple of years thing called, you know, uh, MCM, multi-cloud management. There was announced that there were actually some of the personnel and some of the products from IBM has co have come into Red Hat. Of course, Red Hat doing what they always do, they're making it open source, and they're, it's advanced cluster management. Really, from my viewpoint, this is an answer to what we've seen in the Kubernetes community for the last year. There is not one Kubernetes distribution to rule them all. I'm going to use what my platforms have, and therefore, how do I manage across my various cloud environments? So, Red Hat for years is OpenShift lives everywhere. It sits on top of VMware uh, virtualization environment. It sits on top of AWS, Azure, and Google, um, or it just lives in your Linux farms. Uh, but ACM now is how do I manage my Kubernetes environment? Of course, you know, super optimized to work with OpenShift and the roadmap as to how it can manage uh, with Azure Kubernetes uh, and, and some of the other environments. So, you know, you now have some former IBMers that are there, and as you said, Dave, some good 
good acceleration uh, in the growth uh, from the Red Hat numbers. Uh, we'd seen like right around the time that the acquisition happened, Red Hat had a, a little bit of a down quarter. Uh, so, you know, absolutely the services and the, the scale that IBM can bring should help to bring new logos. Of course, right now, Dave, uh, with the current global situation, it's a little bit tough to go and be going after new business. Yeah, and we'll talk about that a little bit, but, but I want to come back to sort of when I was pressing you before on the, to the true independence of, of Red Hat. By the way, I'm not, I don't think that's necessarily a wrong thing. I'll give you an example. Look at Dell right now. Why is Dell relevant in cloud? But, VMware. Okay, but if <laughs> Dell goes to market and says, we're relevant in cloud because of VMware, well, then why am I talking to you? Why don't I talk to VMware? And so, so my point is that, that in some regards, you know, having that integration is a, is a real advantage. Now, you know, you were at you know, EMC in the time when they were sort of flip-flopping back and forth between integrated and not, and separate and not. It's obviously worked out for them, but it's not necessarily clear cut. And I would say in the case of, of IBM, I think it's the right move. Why is that? Arvin Krishna talked about three enduring platforms that IBM has developed. One is mainframe, that's you know, gonna, here to stay. Uh, the second was middleware, and the third is services. And he's saying that hybrid cloud is now the fourth enduring platform that they want to build. Well, how are they going to build that? What are they going to build that on? They're going to build that on OpenShift. They, their, their other challenge is to sort of retool their entire middleware portfolio around OpenShift, not unlike what Oracle did with, uh, with Fusion when it, when it bought Sun. Part of the reason it bought Sun was for Java. So these are, these are key levers, not necessarily in and of themselves, you know, huge revenue drivers, but they lead to awesome revenue opportunities. So that's why I actually think it's the right move that what IBM's doing. Keep the Red Hat sort of brand and culture, but integrate as fast as possible to get cash flow accretive, we've achieved that, and get EPS accretive. That to me makes a lot of sense. Yeah, Dave, I've heard you talk often. You know, if you're not a leader in a position, or you know, hear John Chambers from Cisco when he was running it. You know, if I'm not number one or number two, why am I in it? How many places did IBM have a leadership position? Red Hat's a really interesting company because they have a leadership position in Linux, obviously. They have a leadership position now in Kubernetes. Red Hat culturally, of course, isn't one to jump up and down and talk about you know, how they're number one in all of these spaces because it's about open source, it's about community, uh, and you know, that does require a little bit of a cultural shift as, as IBM works with them. Uh, but interesting times, and yeah, Red Hat is quietly an important piece of the ecosystem. Let me, um, let me bring in some ETR data, uh, Alex, if you pull up the, that's, that second slide. What, and I've shown this before in, in breaking analysis, and what this slide shows in the vertical axis, is, it shows net score. Net score is a measure of spending momentum, spending velocity. Uh, the, the horizontal axis is, is, is called market share, it's really not market share, it's, it's really a measure of pervasiveness. The, the mentions in the data set. We're talking about 899 uh, responses here out of, out of over 1,200 in the April survey. And this is the multi-cloud landscape. So what I did here, Stu, I pulled on containers, container platforms, uh, uh, container management, and cloud. And we positioned the companies on this sort of X, Y axis. And you can see here, you obviously have in the upper right, you got Azure and AWS. Why did I include AWS in the multi-cloud landscape? You've answered that question before, but yeah, answer it again. because Dave, even though Amazon might not allow you to even use the word multi-cloud, you can't have a discussion of multi-cloud without having Amazon in that discussion. And they've shifted on hybrid. Expect them to adjust their positioning on multi-cloud in the future. Yeah. Now coming back to this 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 data, you see Kubernetes is on there. Kubernetes, I know, is not a company, <laughs> but ETR actually tracks Kubernetes. You can see how hot it is in terms of its net score and spending momentum. Yeah, I mean, Dave, you know, the thing, the, the obvious thing to look at there is you, you see how strong Kubernetes is. If IBM plus Red Hat can keep that leadership in Kubernetes, they should do much better in that space than they would have on, uh, uh, with, with just their products alone. And that's really the lead of this chart. That really cuts to the chase, too, as you see, you see Red, Red Hat OpenShift has really strong spending momentum, although I will say, if you back up, uh, back up to say April, July, October 18, 19, it actually was a little higher, so it's, it's been pushed down. Remember, this is the April survey, which ran from mid-March to mid-April, so we're talking right in the middle of the pandemic, okay? So everybody's down, but nonetheless, you can see the opportunity is for 
IBM and Red Hat to kind of meet in the middle. Leverage IBM's massive install base and in its, in its services presence and its market presence, its pervasiveness, or AKA market share in this rubric, and then use Red Hat's momentum and kind of meet in the middle. And that's the kind of point that we have here with IBM's opportunity. And that really is why IBM is a leader, in, in, or at least a, a favorite, in my view, in multi-cloud. Well, well, Dave, if you'd looked two years ago and you said, what was the competitive landscape? Red Hat was an early leader in the Kubernetes you know, multi-cloud discussion. Today, if you ask everybody, well, who's doing great in Kubernetes? You have to talk about all the different options that uh, Amazon has. Amazon still has their own container management with ACS. Of course, AKS is doing strong and well, and Amazon, whatever they do, they, we know they're going to be competitive. Microsoft's there, but it's not all about competition in this space, Dave, because you know we see Red Hat partnering across these environments. They do have a partnership with AWS. Uh, they do have uh, you know partnership uh, with um, you know Microsoft yeah. up on stage there. So uh, where it was really interesting, Dave, you know one of the things I was coming into this show looking is what is Red Hat's answer to what VMware is really starting to do in this space? So vSphere 7 rolled out and that is, is the GA of Project Pacific. So taking virtualization and containers and putting them together. Red Hat, of course, has had virtualization for a long time with KVM. They have a different answer of how they're doing OpenShift virtualization and it, rather than saying, here's my virtual environment, and I can also do Kubernetes on it, they're saying containers are the future and where you want to go, and we can bring your VMs into containers, really shift them the way you have, really kind of a lift and shift, but then modernize them. Dave, customers are, you know, you want to meet customers where they are, you want to help them move forward. Virtualization in general has been a you don't want to touch your applications, you want to just you know, let it ride forever, but the, the, real, the real driver for companies today is I've got to build new apps, I need to modernize on my environment, and you know, Red Hat is positioning, and you know, I, I like what I'm hearing from them, I like what I'm hearing from Red Hat's customers on how they're helping take both the physical, the virtual, the containers, and the cloud, and bring them all into this modern era. Yeah, and, and you know, IBM made an early bet on, on Kubernetes, and obviously uh, uh, <laughs> around Red Hat. Uh, you could see, actually, on that uh, earlier slide we showed you, IBM, we didn't really talk about it, they said they had 23% uh, growth in cloud, which is their a $22 billion business for IBM. You're smiling. Yeah, look, good for IBM. They're going to redefine cloud. You know, let AWS, you know, kick and scream. Uh, they're going to say, hey, here's how we define cloud. We include our on-prem, we include our you know, portions of our consulting business. I mean, I honestly have no idea what's in the 22 billion and how, if they're growing 22 billion at 23%, wow, that's pretty awesome. I'm not sure, I think they're kind of mixing apples and oranges there, but it makes for a good slide. Yeah, you would say, wait, shouldn't that be four billion you added, you only added two or three billion? Uh, you know, num numbers can tell a story, but you can also manipulate but them. But the point <laughs> is, the point is, I, I've always said this, near term, the, to get you know, return on this deal, it's about plugging uh, OpenShift into services and modernizing applications. Long term, it's about maintaining IBM and Red Hat's relevance in the hybrid cloud world, which is, I don't know how big it is, it's a, probably a trillion dollar opportunity. That really is critical from a st strategy standpoint. Stu, I want to ask you about the announcements. What about any announcements that you saw coming from Red Hat are, are relevant, what do we need to know there? Yeah, so the, you know, one of the bigger ones we already talked about, that you know, multi-cloud manager, what Red Hat has, the advanced cluster management, or ACM, absolutely is an, era, an area we should look. VMware Tanzu, Azure Arc, Google Anthos, and now ACM from Red Hat in partnership with IBM uh, is an area still really early. Dave, I talked to some of the executives in the space and say, are, you know, are we going to learn from the mistakes of Multi-vendor management, Dave. You, you know, you think about the CA and BMC. You know exactly uh, of, of the past. Will we have learned from those? Is this the right way to do it? It is early, but Red Hat obviously has a position here, and they're doing it. Um, did hear plenty about how Red Hat is plugging into all the IBM environments. Dave Z Power, you know, the cloud solutions, and of course. Uh, you know, IBM solutions uh, across the board. To my point of getting a little blue washed, but hey, it's got to happen. I think that's a smart move. Right, uh, you know, we, we talked about, you know, really modernizing the applications. Uh, 
uh, in the environments. I, I talked a bit about the virtualization piece. The other one, if you say, okay, how do I pull the virtualization forward? What about the future? So OpenShift Serverless is the other one. It's really a tech preview at this point. It's built off of the K-Native project, which is part of the CNCF, um, which is basically how do I still have you know, containers and Kubernetes underneath? Can that plug into serverless or does serverless get rid of everything? So IBM, Oracle, Red Hat, uh, and others really have been pushing hard on this K-Native solution. It has matured a lot. There's an ecosystem growing as to how it can connect to Azure, how it can connect to AWS. So definitely something from that app dev piece to watch. And, and Dave, that's where I had some really good discussions with customers as well as the, the Red Hat execs and their partners. That boundary between the infrastructure team and the app dev team, they're helping to pull them together and some of the tooling actually helps. Ansible's a great example of that uh, in the past, but you know, others in the portfolio. And lastly, if you want to talk a huge opportunity for Red Hat, IBM, and it's a jump ball for everyone, is edge computing. So Red Hat, I've talked to them for years about what they were doing in the open stack community with network functions virtualization or NFV. Uh, Verizon was up on stage. Uh, I've got an interview for Red Hat Summit with uh, Vodafone Idea, uh, which has 300 million subscribers in India. Uh, and you know the Red Hat portfolio really helping uh, a lot of the customers there. So it's the telco edge uh, is where we see a strong push there. It's definitely something we've been watching from the you know the big cloud players uh, and th those partnerships, Dave. So you know last year Satya Nadella was up on the main stage uh, with Red Hat. Uh, this year Scott Guthrie, uh, you know there he's at every Microsoft show and he's at the Red Hat show. So it is. Still ironic for those of us that have watched this industry, and you say, okay, where are some of the important partnerships for Red Hat? It's Microsoft. I mean, you know, we all remember when you know open source was the you know evil enemy uh, for, for Microsoft, and of course Satya Nadella has changed things a lot. It's interesting to watch. I'm sure we'll talk more at Think Dave. You know, Arvin Krishna, the culture he will bring in with the, the support of Jim Whitehurst, who comes over from IBM, uh, compared to what. Satya has successfully done at Microsoft. Well, let's talk about that. Let's let's talk about let's let's bring it home with the sort of near term, mid term, and really I want to talk about the long term strategic aspects of IBM and Red Hat's future. So near term, IBM has suspended guidance, like, like everybody. Okay, uh, they don't have great visibility. Some 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 things to watch. By the way, a lot of people are saying, oh, just you know, kind of draw draw a red line through this quarter. You, you just you know, ignore it. I disagree. Look at cash flow, look at balance sheets, look at what companies are doing and how they're positioning. That's very important right now and will give us some clues. And so there's a couple of things that we're watching with IBM. One is their software business crashed in March. Um, and software deals usually come in, big deals come in at the end of the quarter. People were too distracted, they, they, they stopped spending. Um, so that's a concern. Jim Cavanaugh on the call talked about how they're really paying attention to those services contracts to see how they're going, are they continuing, what's the average price of those. Uh, so that's something that you got to watch you know, near term. Okay, fine. Uh, again, as I said, I think IBM will get through this. What really I want to talk about, Stu, is the, the prospects going forward. I'm really excited about the choice that IBM made, the board putting Arvind Krishna in charge, and the move that he made in terms of promoting you know, Jim Whitehurst uh, to IBM. So let, let's talk about that for a minute. Arvin is a technical visionary, and it's, it's high time that uh, uh, IBM got back to a, being a technology company first, because that's what IBM is. And, and, I, and Lou, Lou Gerstner you know, arguably saved the company. They, they pivoted to services. Sam Palmasano continued that. When Ginny came in, you know, she had a services heritage. She did the PWC deal. And IBM really became a, a, a services company first, in my view. Arvin is saying explicitly, we want to lead with technology, and I think that's the right move. Of course IBM is going to deliver outcomes. That's what IBM's heritage has been for the last 20 years. But they are a technology company, and having a technology visionary at the lead is very important. Why? Because IBM essentially is the leader, uh, prior to Red Hat, in one thing. Mainframes, IBM used to lead in database, they used to lead in storage, they used to lead in semiconductors, on and on and on, servers. Now they lead in mainframes, and, and now switch to look at Red Hat. Red Hat's a leader, you know, they got the best product out there. So I want you to talk about how you see that shift to more of a sort of technical 
and, and product focus, preserving the outcome, obviously, but your thoughts on the move, the culture, you know, putting Jim as the president, I love it. I think it was actually absolutely brilliant. Yeah, D Dave, absolutely. I, I, I know we were excited because we, you know, personally, we know both of those leaders. They are strong leaders. They are strong technically. Dave, when I think about all the companies we look at, I, I challenge anybody to find a more consistent and reliable pair of companies than IBM and Red Hat. You know, for years it was, you know, Red Hat being an open source company and you know, the way their business model set it, it's not the, you know, ebb and flow of product releases. We know what the product's going to be, the roadmaps are all online, and they're going to consistently grow. What we've seen Red Hat go from kind of traditional software models to the subscription model, um, and th there are some of the product things we didn't get into too much as to things that they've built into, you know, Red Hat Enterprise Linux and expanding uh, really their cloud and SaaS offerings uh, to enhance those environments, and that, that's where I IBM is pushing too. So, you know, they, there's been some retooling for the modern era. Uh, they are well positioned to help customers through that, you know, digital transformation. Uh, and as you said, Dave, you and I, we both read The Open Organization uh, by Jim Whitehurst. You know, he came in uh, to Red Hat, um, you know, really gave some strong leadership. The culture is strong. Um, they, they, they have maintained, you know, really strong morale. When I talk to people inside, you know, was there concern inside when IBM was making the acquisition? Of of course there was. We've all seen some acquisitions that haven't gone great when IBM has blue washed them. They're trying to make really strong that Red Hat stays Red Hat. To your point, you know, Dave, we've already seen some IBM people go in and some of the leadership now is on the IBM side. So, you know, can they improve the product, include the, improve those customer outcomes, and can Red Hat's culture actually help move IBM forward, you know, a company with over 100 years and over 200,000 employees, you'd normally look and say, can a 12,000 person company change that? Well, with a new CEO, with his wingman, uh, you know, being Whitehurst driving that, there's a possibility. So it's an interesting one to watch. Um, you know, absolutely current situations uh, are challenging. You know, Red Hat's growth is really about adding new logos and that will be challenged in the short term. Uh, yeah, Dave, I, I, I love you. Shouldn't pe let people off the hook for Q2. Maybe they need to go like our kids. Uh, this semester is a pass fail uh, rather than a, than, than a letter yeah. grade. Uh, yeah, but, right, uh, good point. <laughs> yeah, and I, I guess my point is that there's information and, and you got to squint through it. And I think that, um, look at to me, you know, this is like Arvin's timing couldn't be better. Not that he orchestrated it, but I mean, you know, when Ginny Tech took over, IBM was over 100 million, 100 billion. I said many times that they, IBM's got to shrink to grow. She just ran out of time for the grow part. That's now on Arvin. And I think, they're, they're, so he's got the COVID mulligan, first of all. You know, the stock's been, been pressured down. So, you know, his tenure, he, he's got a great opportunity to do with IBM in a way what Satya Nadella did, um, is doing at Microsoft. You think about it, they're both deep technologists. You know, Arvind, hardcore, you know, computer scientist, Indian Institute of Technology, Indian Institute of Technology, uh, different school than Satya went to, but still steeped in, in a technical understanding, a technical visionary who can really drive, uh, uh, you know, product greatness, you know, in AI with, with, with Watson. We've talked a lot about hybrid cloud quantum is something that IBM's really investing heavily in, and that's a super exciting area. Things like blockchain, some of these new areas that I think IBM can lead, and it's all running on the cloud. You, you know, look, IBM generally has been pretty good with ac acquisitions. They've, they've, yes, they fumbled a, a few, but I've always made the point, they are in the cloud game. IBM and Oracle, yeah, they're behind from a you know, market share standpoint, but they're in the game, and they have their software estate and their PaaS estate to insulate them from the race to the bottom. So I, I really like their prospects and I like the, the organizational structure that they've put in place. And it, by the way, it's not just Arvin and, and, and Jim, you mentioned Paul Cormier, you know, uh, 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 Rob Thomas has been, been elevated to senior VP, really important in the data analytics space. So a lot of good things going on there. Yeah, and, and Dave, one of the questions you've been asking and, and we've been all talking to leaders in the industry, you know, what 
changes permanently after the, this, this current situation. You know, automation, you know, more adoption of cloud, uh, the importance of developers, are, are there's even more of a spotlight on those environments, and Red Hat has strong positioning in that space, and a lot of experience that they help their customers. And being open source, you know, very transparent. Uh, there, uh, both IBM and Red Hat are doing a lot to try to help the community. They've got contests going online to, you know, help get you know, open source and hackers and uh, people working on things and you know, strong leadership to help lead through these stormy weathers. So Stu, it's going to be a really interesting decade um, and theCUBE will be here to cover it. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully events will come back until they do. We'll be socially responsible and, and, and socially uh, distant. Uh, but Stu, thanks for helping us break down the, the Red Hat and sort of tipping our toe into IBM more coverage uh, and IBM Think uh, and, uh, next week. This is Dave Vellante for Stu Miniman. You're watching theCUBE and our continuous coverage of the Red Hat Summit. Keep it right there. We'll be back after this short break. <laughs>